All right. So heap sort. Now heap sort is no longer we're no longer uh, talking about a divide and conquer approaches. Okay, it's unlike it's unlike quick sort and merge sort, but it's still a uh, frequently used algorithm. Okay, and it has its own advantages. For example, it's uh, a very efficient one. It runs in the same uh, scale, it, uh, it grows, uh, it has same running time efficiency as the merge sorts and quick sorts, okay? It, it is also a sort in place, okay? Only, and uh, there's only a constant number of elements are, are required for, for extra memory, okay? So, which is, which is also good, okay? And the design idea, Okay, let's look at why we are kind of using a, a, use, a use a data structure called heap. Okay, so we basically use such a data structure to manage information. Okay, it's a, um, it has advantages in different cases. Okay, but we're gonna first look at how the how the how the detailed implementation uh, this algorithm uses. Okay, so heap is, is the key in this algorithm. And the heap that we are talking about is binary heap, which can be, you can think of it as a, as a, as a tree-like structure, okay? But in memory space, we store all the elements in the heap still in the, in the, in the array, okay? So it's an array object, but it can be visualized almost to a complete binary tree, okay? So if we visualized in a, on a paper, it'll be something like this. The number above the circle is the index, okay? The number within the circle is the value for that element. So the first element is 16, second element is 14, third is 10, okay? As you can see, some elements, has two children nodes. For example, to the first element, the second element is the left child. And the third element is the right child. Right? To the root, of course. And the left child itself also has a left child here and the right, okay? So, but for some nodes, for example, these two nodes, they don't have children nodes at all. While the node here, it only has a, a left child, but no right child, okay? So that's why I say the heap can be see some, can be viewed as a nearly complete. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have, have to be a, a complete uh, binary tree. Okay, but everything here visualized on the left is actually stored in an array. Okay, so in, in computer memory, in memory space, it's no, it's not that different from an array. Okay, we just uh, put the first elements as the first element in the array, second element, second elements here, third elements here, right? Fourth elements right next to the third, right? And so on. Okay, so it's in, in memory space, it's not. Uh, a, a fancy structure here, okay? But we can use these curves to indicate the uh, parents to children relationship, right? The second node is the left child, right? Right child, left child, right child, and so on, okay? All right, so, we need to have some uh, augmentation though to a regular array in order to represent a heap. For instance, in the array, we have a dot length to indicate the number of elements in the array. But we also have a dot heap size, okay? Okay, note that here, the heap size, this is not a this is not a minus, it's a heap dash size. Okay, so it's a word, heap size. It indicates the number of elements in the heap. 
Okay, so that in, implicitly uh, says that not everything in an array can be considered as a as in the heap. Okay, so the array dot the array dot length can be larger than the array dot heap size. Okay, but a heap size should be always less than or equal to the length because it cannot exceed the boundary of the array. Okay, so this heap size is some additional attributes that we assign to the to the array to the array object in memory. Okay. Now let's see how do we uh, represent a heap, uh, particularly the the elements in the heap. Okay, so we can use these heap size. Uh, attributes to indicate how many elements are there in a heap. So this heap size must be greater than zero and smaller than smaller than or equal to eight dollars. Okay. It indicates it indicates how many elements in an array are treated as a heap. Okay. So this 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 heap size attribute is something we can change. We can, we can increase it or decrease it. Okay. And the roots the top node is located at A1, okay? And given the index of any node, we can actually compute the indices for its parents, left child and the right child, okay? So for example, we take the same demo uh, instance from the previous slide, okay? How we compute the parent node is simply to return the floor of i over two. Okay, so let's examine it from the uh, example here. The element A2, if we use two divided by two to the floor, which will be one, right? So one will be, uh, A1 will be A2's parents. That is correct, right? And for A3, three divided by two to the floor is also one. Okay, so that is also correct. Let's say, take another example. A eight, eight divided by two would be four, right? So four would be the parent for A two, which is correct. And which is also correct for A nine. All right, so this is a useful uh, procedure we use to find the parents. And likewise, we can find the left child and right child through a very simple computation. We can use two times i to find the left child for node i and the two times i plus one as the right node of a node. All right, so these are just the helper functions uh, in later when we implement other more advanced uh, heap operations. All right, then, Having heaps defined, we actually have two types of heaps, max heap and a minimized heap, max heap and a minimal heap. The max heap, it satisfies this, quantity, this uh, condition. For every node other than the root node, we will have that the parents should be greater than or equal to the children node, okay? That is true for every node other than the parent, other than the root node, because the root node doesn't have a parent, okay? And that means the largest element should be stored at the root node because it should be greater than its children, right? The, the root node should be greater than, their, than its children who also be greater than their children, right? So the root node is always the biggest one. And the subtrees rooted at any node contains values that are no larger than the node itself, okay? That is, so that means if we take any subtree from, from, from a max heap, it's also a max heap, okay? So on the other side, we can define a minimal heap with the opposite relationship. The parent node should be always smaller than or equal to the children node. Okay, it's just the opposite 
Okay, so the smallest elements will be stored in the root node in the case for minimal heap. Okay, and in the in in our heap sort algorithm, we will use max heap. Okay, and the minimal heaps are also useful. And uh, in in the later lecture for this uh, course, we will see that the minimal heaps can be used to implement priority queues. Okay, it is something that we will use quite a lot, quite often in uh, in graph algorithms. All right. So now let's look at the heights. Okay, so these are the bunch of notations that we need to define. Okay, the heights of a node is basically the number of edges on the longest downward path from the row to a leaf, from a from the node to the leaf to a leaf. Okay, so a leaf is something is is a node that don't have children nodes. Okay, so in this case, the elements the the nine and three and the two and four and one, these are leaf nodes, okay? So if we are considering the heights of this node, right? If it's a node eight, then the longest uh, downward path is from eight to two or from eight to four. Each one, either one has the length one. So the height for this node eight is one. And for the one node higher, oops, for the node 12, for node 14, then we have one, two, right? As the, uh, as the longest uh, pass downward. While for the root node, then we have to go towards the left branch, right? One, two, three. So the height of the roots is the height of the, of the heap. Okay, we can use the top node to define the height of the heap. And one interesting property that we need to use is the height of a heap and its relationship to the number of elements in it. This quantity is something we're gonna Keep in mind, it's the height of the heap is proportionate to the logarithm of n, and the n is the elements in the in the heap. This is similar to the recursion trees we draw. Okay, in the recursion trees, if the if the the root node uh, is is a linear function is is c n right the is is n then the total uh, the, the, the total number of heights, the total number of depths is also a logarithm of it, right? So it's actually the, a, a, a very common property, a very universal common property to any tree-like structure. So to heap, the heights of the heap is also a logarithm of it, okay? If we know the uh, number of elements in the heap, we can quickly uh, estimate how, how high the, the, root, the, uh, the, the heap should be. All right, now let's look at some basic operations on the heap. And these operations are what we're gonna use to implement the heap sort. Um, the, most basic, the most basic operations include the following ones. And they uh, often are runs uh, in a logarithm of n time, okay? For example, the max heapify, okay? The max heapify, Procedure is something we're gonna define in the next uh, few slides. So this procedure actually maintains the max heap property, okay? But it uh, runs with certain uh, constraints, with certain conditions, input conditions, okay? And the running time of it is big O of log logarithm of n. And having max heapify, defined, we're gonna have build max heap. The build max heap function is a function to create a max heap from an unordered array, okay? It runs in linear time. And having these two functions defined, we are able to define a heap sort, which is our target actually. So the heap sorts, it sorts an array in place and it will run in big O of n times logarithm of n times. Okay, so we 
have the running time here from logarithm of n to n to n time logarithm of n. Okay, so we'll start from the max heap defined and let's figure out what this actually what this algorithm does. All right, max heap defined. The inputs is an array and an index i. What it does is that first we assume the two binary trees rooted at left node and the right node of i, they are already max heaps. Okay, so this is our assumption. Everything before is our assumption, okay? So we assume that the two left node, the, the left tree and the right tree, they are already max heaps, but the root AI, it could be smaller than its children, okay? So we're not sure about that. And it, if AI is smaller than the children, then it obviously violates the max heap properties. So what this max heapify does is to make those tree rooted at i to be a max heap, okay? It maintains the max heap property uh, for the tree rooted at the index i, okay? But it assumes that the, the, root, the, the trees rooted at the left i and the right i, they are already max heaps, okay? It's a quite, uh, it's actually requires a quite a strong condition. So let's look at this uh, procedure. It, what it basically it does is to uh, let the value at the root, which is AI, to flow down in the max heaps so that the subtrees rooted at the index I obeys the max heap property or, set, or is satisfied the, the, with the max heap property, okay? 10 lines of code and we will analyze the functions of it. All right. So let's see the first two lines, two variables, lowercase l is the index for the left child node for i, right? R, lowercase r is the right node, right child node. Okay, then what's left is a if else and two if conditions. The first if, Actually, the, the first if, else, and the if, okay, three branches, actually determines the largest elements among the three. Which three? A i, a of left of i, and a of right of i. Okay, so a i is an uh, element in the array, and left of i is also uh, an array in the, and element in the array. While the right of i is also the right, right an array, uh, and element in the array, okay? So we're comparing the three. So the if, else, and if, if, else, and if, basically wants to find which one is the largest, right? So if, uh, the L is within the max heap range and AL is greater than AI, then we assign L to the largest variable. Okay, so this largest variable is, is just a, an index. It's just a variable to remember the index. And if, not, if this is not the case, then the largest remains to be I. And then we need to compare R, right? We need to compare with AR with A largest. If AR is larger, then largest is R now. Okay, so from line three to seven, we are trying to find which one is the largest and we will, we, we will mark its, we will uh, mark the largest uh, index, okay? Then if AI is the largest, then the subtree rooted at node I is already a max heap, right? Then we can simply terminate Right, this is for, so this is for the line eight. Line eight, right? It's a simple check whether I is the largest. If it's already the largest, then we can stop, 
right? It's already a max heap. If not, what we need to do, we need to exchange um, AI with the largest element, right? Because we want to, we we want the root element to has to have the largest value, right? So we need to exchange AI with a largest, and which will, th so this step. Is okay. Is, is no problem. First of all, so we can we can swap the AI with the A largest, but the outcome is that we may violate the the subtree rooted at the Trojan node to break the max heap property. Okay, right? Because when we after we switched AI with aj uh, ai with a largest now the root node is the is the largest elements okay but the root node but the trees rooted at the child node which we have which we just switched may has broken the the max heap property so that's why we need to call max heapify on the subtree rooted at the largest node. Okay, we need to call the function recursively itself to max heapify the subtree. Okay, so let's see how this algorithm runs through some examples. All right. Um, this is the, the heap that input heap input array that we have. And if we put it in the array, it will be like this, right? And the max, uh, the heap size is 10, which means only the 10 elements are considered as the heap elements, while everything behind is not our, our interest here. Okay, so let's see uh, what would happen if we call max heapify on A uh, and while the index is two, okay? On the second element, okay? Then, we are considering these three elements, A2, A4, and A5, right? So the left element is four, the right element index is five, okay? We want to consider which, we want to find which one is larger. And of course, in this case, the fourth at the A4 has the largest value, okay? So the largest is four, which means the subtree rooted at A2 is, violates the max PB5. So this four is smaller than 14. So we need to switch them. Otherwise it's gonna, this, this node violates the max heap, okay? So we need to exchange A4 with A2, okay? And then call max heapify on A4, right? Because now this subtree, may already violate the max heap, max heap property because you can look, the four is uh, smaller than eight, right? So it uh, obviously violates the max heap uh, property, okay? So now we need to call max heapify on i equals four here, right? And this is a recursive call invoked in a previous, in a previous slide. Okay, in the previous slide, it says uh, it's uh, it will call after we exchange the a two and then a four. We will call max heapify on four, right? Because four is the largest uh, index. Okay. Then we need to call max heapify on i equals four. And we do the same examination. The left one is uh, has index eight, the right index is nine, right? And a nine is the largest one, all right? So largest one, the larger index is nine. So the subtree rooted at eight four also violates max heap five. So we need to exchange a nine with a four and then call max heap five on a nine again, okay? And if we look at a nine, 
left child is 18 and the right child is 19, which is already over overseas, right? Exceeds the, the exceeds the heap size. All right, so the max heapify is already satisfied. We don't need to do anything more, right? No further change needs to be made. Okay, so that's where we stop. Okay, so after we stop, let's look at the whole uh, max heap. The whole sub the whole subtree rooted at a two again. Now fourteen is greater than eight and seven. Right, eight is greater than four, eight is greater than two. So the whole max heap uh, property is maintained for this subtree, okay? And that is our uh, goal for calling the max heapify procedure. All right, so the whole max heapify procedure actually lets the initial let the original value in A2 to flow down to a proper position. So in this example here, the four will flow down, right? To the proper position. While the 14 will flow up and the eight will flop. So it's rearranges the, all the elements along the path. Okay, so that's the max heap property is maintained, max heap property is maintained, all right? All right, so that's what this algorithm does. And the running time for it, if you look at it, it's also interesting to, to analyze it. Because the maximify is a recursive call, then we can probably use, um, use, a, use a recurrence to, uh, to, to express the running time of it, okay? So everything before the, uh, because before the recursive call is, uh, constant time because there's no for loops involved, right? It's just a if else, if else. So it's a very uh, cheap operations. And to the question of the sub problem, right? So our what we don't know is that what what the, the what what is the size for the sub problem, right? We don't know that. So we need to figure out what is the sub trees rooted at node the largest. Okay. So this is something we can do some analysis. Okay, so the running time should be something like this. The subtree uh, rooted at node largest, but the B is unknown. Okay, so we, we need to analyze by different cases. All right, so there are two cases we are analyzing here. The first one is the balance case in which the left branch and the right branch has the same number of elements. Okay, the left, child, the left tree and the right tree. So the recursive call is either on the left subtree or at the left or on the right tree, right? There's only two choices. So in this case, it's a balanced tree. So the bottom level is full. So the bottom level contains all the leaf nodes, right? So this is the bottom level. And if we let n to be the size of subtrees rooted at i, okay? Then the, sub, the, the, the left subtree is almost the half the size of the of the of n, right? <clears throat> because there's only one node here, while all, almost half of it is on the to the right, and the other half is to the right, right? That's a that's almost a half of n. So we use the to the floor symbol here. So we can think of this uh, equation. The sub problems should be this one n over two, right? It should be bounded by n over two if we remove the uh, flooring symbols, okay? All right, if this is the case, then we can simply use master method to compute the running time, which is log with an open, right? Which is correct, right? And then if we look at not an, that ideal case, if the, if the tree, if the subtree is not balanced, it's, it's an unbalanced case, Right, we can use uh, do this uh, uh, use this worst case uh, scenario. Okay, so in the worst case, the bottom level is half full. Okay, and the right subtree has one less level than the left subtree. 
tree, we can assume the right subtree has uh, k levels. Okay, we assume the left subtree. This one has the k levels. And the number of nodes in the right subtree is from level i to k minus one, uh, uh, summing up two to the power of i. Okay, so because the uh, according to the according to the um, principles of the, these two splits, this each node has a two split. So the 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 number of nodes doubles from level to level. So the number of nodes in the right right, right subtree we can is something like this. We can represent it as a uh, capital R, because the left subtree has one more level. It's the range of the, sub, the summation should from should be zero to k, right? So the result is two to the power of k plus one, which is almost the two uh, twice as much as the right node, uh, as the right tree. So in total, the to total number of nodes is three times r. Okay. Then, if the largest one is the right node, if we are switching i with right i, then we need to use this formula, right? Because r is if because r is one third the size of the number of total number of node, uh, nodes. Okay, so if we are switching left with right i, we should use this equation. While in the other case, we should use uh, two times two thirds of the of the original size. Okay, but if we put them together, we should use the this. Uh, um, upper bound, okay? So this should be uh, bounded by this one. So the use master theorem, we still have the logarithm of n uh, as the running time, okay? So that doesn't uh, influence the final results, okay? But uh, I think this fine-grained analysis is uh, helpful for to, to understand the, the, the relationships between the, the different outcomes, the different outcomes of uh, of switching to a different uh, uh, child node in max hp5. All right. So we can, uh, upon this time, we can, uh, at this point, we can conclude that the max hp5 runs at the logarithm of the n times, okay? Uh, but there's an uh, alternative uh, way to analyze the running time. Now we need to, uh, refer to the to the to the notation of heights, okay? Because we know the max simplify let the elements flow down, right? It let it flow down. Then, in the worst case, the AI will flow all the way down to a leaf node, okay? Then, but we already know that if H is the height of node I, then the running time of max simplify is big O of H, right? Because we let it flow down for H levels, for H depths, okay? And we know that the H is proportionate to logarithm of N, proportional to the logarithm of N. So this is a, a alternative way to think of this problem, which is a, a more intuitive way to, to, to get to the conclusion. So anyway, uh, we have implemented max Hibify and uh, we know that it's a quite uh, efficient algorithm. Uh, so now it's time to build a max heap uh, from an unordered uh, uh, array, okay? So uh, what we need to basically do is to use the max heapify that we have just defined. But this time we need to call max heapify in a bottom up manner in order to create a max heap from the array, okay? How do we do that? And a naive solution is that we call max hippify on every element of A from A1 to AN, right? That is a very naive way because we make sure that every element is called with max hippify so that the, uh, the max, heap, max heap property is guaranteed, right? But uh, we say it's a naive solution because we didn't consider any redundancy. There's actually, a lot of redundancy in this solution, okay? Because if we observe the sub-array, anything 
to the right half, half of the elements from n over two to the floor plus one to n, half of the sub area, they are actually leaves to the tree, okay? They are not the non-leaf nodes. So there's no need to maxify, to, ma to call maxify on the leaf because the leaf don't have node, don't have children node at all. So they, they are already maxi. We don't need to call maxi, maxify on them. So we need to modify it if we want the algorithm to be more efficient. We should modify the algorithm to run on just on non-leaf nodes, okay? And the non-leaf nodes starts from the position here. Starts from the position a from the elements a dot length divided by two. That is the almost the midpoint of a, and we use the uh, order of for loop as a uh, descending for loop from this mid node down to the first elements in a. And for each element along the way, we call max heapify on it. Okay, so that is basically what the build max heap procedure does. Okay, so you may ask why we need to uh, use the the, the downward uh, order, right? So this is a tricky question because this bottom up order, this downward order is actually quite important, okay? And uh, that is basically because the max hippify has a, an assumption. Do you still remember the assumption? It assumes that the roots, the, the subtrees rooted at its children nodes are already max heaps, okay? If we start from a, if we start from the first elements, okay, if we start from a first element, A1, right, that's A1. We don't know yet if the subtree rooted at A2 and A3, they are already max heaps or not, okay? But if we call max heapify on A3, and then A2, after these are called, then the max heapify on A1 is already satisfied, right? Is already guaranteed that the root node is already max heaps. So this backward style is very important here. And let's use the, our remainder time to, to look at an example here, okay? And now this procedure, uh, the, this whole input sequence is a totally uh, uh, unordered sequence. Right, 4132, these are the values in the array and the indices. So the length is 10 and half the length is five, right? So let's uh, look at what this procedure does to the inputs. All right, so the I will start from five. Okay, and we call max heapify on A5 first, right? On A5, because the subtree rooted at A5 is already max heap. So we will skip to the next one, right? So when we, now we are going to max, call max heapify on A4, right? But the A4 is smaller than A8 and A9. So we need to let the elements in A4 to flow down. Let the two flow down and the 14 flow up, right? And then the next, we will going to max heapify on A3, but the three is also smaller than nine or 10. So we need to let it flow down, let the 10 flow up, okay? And then call max heapify on A2. And the one is obviously very small. We need to let it flow, flow down to the correct position. Right, and let 16 flow up and seven flow up. And lastly, when we hit the first element, A4, we need to let it flow down, 14, A flow up, okay? And that's how we get the uh, last iteration done. And at this step, the whole area A is now a max heap, okay? So we need to call 
basically five iteration steps. And in each iteration, we need to call max KB5. Okay. All right. So we we can we can uh, we can tell that the running time for a build max heap depends on the max heap five because it's several rounds of max heap fives. Okay, it has a simple upper bound, right? We because each call of max heap five takes uh, a logarithm n time. Okay, and we made half of n's that many calls. So intuitively, it, it looks like the, the running time is big O of n times logarithm of n, right? But actually, this uh, upper bound is a loose upper bound. We actually, if we carefully analyze the, the, each, the properties for each, each, uh, each row, each level, we can see that the, uh, we, we actually have a tighter upper bound for, for build max heap phi, okay? Because the running time of max heap phi Again, depends on the height of the node i, right? And a heap of n elements has a height of logarithm of n to the floor, okay? So the number of nodes in each height h is at most that many. So this is something we can, we can, we can determine in the, in the heap structure, which is n divided by two to the power of h plus one, okay? This is something we can know. And so the total cost is bounded by these number of nodes in each height and the, the cost for max KPFI on that height, right? And height should iterate from zero to logarithm of n, okay? And if we sum up these series, this series is something closer to a constant, something has a limit to constants. It's, a, it, it's a basically a, a derivative of a, of a summation of a geometric series, okay? So we can have the total expression to be a linear function, okay? It's not a logarithm and it's not an n times logarithm of n. So it, we, we actually do better than the, an n times logarithm of n. So, the max the, the 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 running time for build a max heap out of a random order is actually linear time okay so uh that's so much for max heapify so having max heapify and uh, build max heap are available now we are able to build the max uh, the heap sort algorithms which is a combination of the of the previous uh, steps okay so we're gonna introduce this algorithm in the next uh, Tuesday's lecture. And uh, hopefully we, we should also complete all the linear, linear time uh, running, uh, linear time uh, sorting algorithms in, uh, in next lecture, in, in next Tuesday's lecture. All right, so any questions so far? All right, no questions, good. Okay, so on, on next, uh, next week, we're gonna do a review. Uh, other than the linear, linear time sorting algorithm, we're gonna do a review and uh, we'll talk about solutions to the previous uh, assignment questions, okay? And uh, two weeks from, uh, I, I think it's on, March 2nd, Tuesday, we should have, we will have our first midterm exams. Alrighty. Okay, I will stop the recording right now.